Cool. Welcome to episode 17 of WP Dev Table. Today we're doing a talk on WordPress API course and book with Josh Pollock. Uh, if you haven't seen WP Dev Table before, it's a roundtable discussion with WordPress developers. Uh, we talk all things geek and hopefully educate you on a few things. Um, joining me today are our usual guest hosts. If you'd like to ask any Oh, sorry, our usual host. If you'd like to ask any questions, use the hashtag on Twitter, hashtag AskWPDevs. So I've got Jason and Tom with me. So introduce yourself, boys. Uh, we'll start off with Tom. Hey, what's up? I'm Tom. I'm in uh, New York, WordPress uh, developer at Alley Interactive. Uh, yeah, what's up, Jason? What's up, Tom? Bronson, Josh. Welcome, Josh. Um, I'm a web developer also based in New York. So we got a lot of time zones represented here. And then uh, <laughs> I do WordPress development, really helping small businesses accomplish their goals month over month by achieving you know, whatever they request. Uh, Josh, why don't you take a little bit of an intro for yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me, Al. Uh, I used to live in New York City, uh, but I was not a web developer at the time. <laughs> now I live in North Florida. Uh, I make WordPress plugins. Uh, Caldera Forms. It's a drag and drop responsive form builder. It's different than the other ones that are out there. It's neat. I hope you try it. Uh, and I also have been working on Ingot, which is an automated A-B testing plugin for WordPress. So it's all self-contained in WordPress itself, uh, and it's optimized to work on any WordPress site, no matter what your traffic level is. Awesome. Cool. So our first question for you is, how did you get into WordPress? Uh, by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how we all got into it. Somehow. Right, yes. Well, no, that's the thing, and I like to put, like, I, I feel like every, co we have these conversations that start with, uh, oh, you know, but I don't have a like, computer science background, but you must. It's like, no, like, <laughs> there are three of us that have a computer science background. <laughs> right, so I, I got into WordPress the normal way, which was I was going to a hippie college to get my degree in environmental studies, and I started writing a blog about being a nerd. Uh, and I randomly used WordPress.com, which I never didn't know was a thing before I was like Googling alternatives to Blogger, which sucked. Um, and when I started Googling how to do things with WordPress.com, it became clear that the answer was you had to have like your own blog, right? And your own host. And so, and that blog wasn't very good, but uh, I found much more fun hacking the theme than like writing for it. Cool. And, yeah, now I'm here. At some point, Scott uh, Kingsley Clark from Pods hired me to do support. Um, and that sort of put me on the trajectory to being a professional at this. Very cool. And, and what was that about? When did you uh, kind of walk the plank, so to speak? Um, so that would be around 2013, I guess. Cool, cool. So I've been doing this uh, in one way or another, you know, starting with, like, theme customizations and working at Pods. Uh, and then, like, there was a time where I thought I was going to make themes, and then the fact that I have no design sense in the slightest... <laughs> okay. Kind of need that. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's like, the that you're throwing around. Like, yeah, plugins. Plugins make sense. <laughs> Josh, what's that furry thing you're throwing around? This? <laughs> this is yeah. my work cat. This is Shy. Um, she's Pretty my trouble. boss. GM. She's in charge here. I work <laughs> to keep my computer warm so she can nap on it. <laughs> so it's when I was cool. working from home all the time, I found that my cat would always just sit on my hands on my keyboard whenever I started getting into that flow state. Does that happen with you too? No, because my computer's like here, which you can't see because it's above, right? Like a laptop that's closed, and so it gets warm, and so she just sleeps on there. Like my Twitter background is her asleep on. If you go like, at Josh Foreman too, if you look at the Twitter profile background, it's her asleep on my computer. So that's the point of the <laughs> operation. I write code so she can have a warm nap. <laughs> at least you're pet friendly. <laughs> yeah. No, she yells if I like if I'm downstairs when I should be at work. Like she'll yell at me. Cool. So with Caldera Forms, how did that start? When did you start development, and what made you kind of want to scratch the itch to create a form builder plugin? Oh, so I interesting. This is the thing: is I did it. Um, David Kramer uh, started Caldera Forms about okay. not a full year, but about a year before we started working together. Um, I know him through mm -hmm. pods. Uh, that's sort of the thread through my life. Um, and he, I was working on a big web app I never finished. Uh, that was kind of fatally flawed sort of project you learn a lot from. But at some, and it was based around Pods, and Pods has like this built-in form builder, like totally code, not a UI form builder. Okay. Uh, that works, but it's limited. And so when I was yeah. running into both limitations of what it could do and also just the interface, 
I said to David, like, hey, your form builder is really neat. I'd like to use it as the front end for this web app. Like, I already have all of the classes to put the code into the application, but I just want to have a cool interface that's responsive in Ajax. I don't have to figure out how all that works. Um, and uh, can I do that? And the first thing we actually collaborated on was this add-on that we call Run Action that just runs an action that exposes an array of all of your data. And it was built towards people like me who didn't know Caldera forms, but like the interface. We're like, ah, oh, this is neat. Like, it works real well for people. And I can just shove that it, that array into whatever. Um, and that was something he built real quick one night. Uh, we were talking in pod Slack, or IRC. This is before yeah. WordPress got Slackified. <laughs> um, and so that's really the start. Like, I, I, I came in as a fan. And for him, it's one of those just nerd challenges of like, oh, man, that's like a cool project. Like, like everybody sort of tackled the WordPress form builder or and like either like made a form builder plugin or they've like made that class to make a form. It, you know, they're like, oh, shoot, like if I have to write an HTML form one more time, it like starts building their own like, oh, man, I'll like make a class that makes a like text plugin and then like I'll extend it and it select and then like I'll make a processing and then you go overboard, right? <laughs> Yeah. And just, screw it, I'll use something else that already exists. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't want to maintain this. <laughs> right, 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 right. We're those guys uh, who like, are up to the talent. It's, um, you know, it, it's been really fun to get involved in something that somebody else started. Um, yeah. You know, like I probably wrote 10% of it at this point. But, awesome. you know, we've gone from like less than 1,000 users when they first started tracking, you know, active installs to it's over 10,000 now. So it's been great to get people like on board and like, you know, see, like, people, oh, I know, you should use Caldera forms for that. Like, when I see that on Facebook and some of the Facebook groups, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and how do you guys tackle feature requests and support and things like that? <sighs> they don't. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I mean, look, we don't take support on WordPress.org. I don't think it's okay. sustainable yeah. for a business. Um, and some people tell me I'm wrong, and my answer to them is uh, WordPress SEO by Yoast, mm. right? Right, like you go get the readme. It says we don't answer yeah. support. You want support? Yep. Buy it. And there are some like every now and then I get an angry because we have a support form. Yep. But we wrote, I wrote an add-on that's like checks if the current user has a licensed product in EDD. <laughs> right, our EDD add-on doesn't do checkout. That's all it does, right? Yep. Um, because that's what I need it for. Eventually, it'll get around to <laughs> doing EDD checkout. But people will be like, "Your support forms work." But no, it's not. It's you read the instructions. It says you have to log <laughs> in and have a thing in there. I'm like, and, uh, like. A few people like get really mad about it, and I get that because mm. people have this expectation of everything's free in WordPress, and um, you know, uh, I don't get paid to work for WordPress.org. I do a lot of stuff free for the community, but me spending over many hours a day, it's just not sustainable doing free support there, um, and it's a bad interface. So, 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 so it's tricky. You know, we try to return our paying customers, uh, and feature requests are. I mean. Uh, it's important to be doing support when you start a company because you find out what's wrong with your product. What, like, you know, people start asking, like, how do I do this? And you're like, mm, it doesn't do that. And they keep asking. Yeah, you, you do learn that. so much, don't you? Because people use your product in different ways you never thought of. Right. It's, it's absolutely great when people ask you a question and you're like, oh, man, give me a week. Like, it'll do, like, that'll be, <laughs> it'll, know, it'll know how to do that in a week. That's amazing. Um, I don't know. It's tricky. We right now we're just using a straight up, you know, use a Caldera form that sends us an email. Yeah. We'll see. Cool. It's um, it's fun being in business. We've been doing it for almost a year now, so, you know, it's time to start uh, figuring out where to go from here. Like it's been a good good start. Like we're in a position to be successful. I think. Where do you find that most of your users come from? Are they people that are picking their first forms plugin, or are they people coming from other plugins like Ninja Forms, Gravity Forms, etc.? I think it's split. I think a lot of, I mean, the WordPress user base grows really rapidly, right? Because so many people um, are like, hey, I'm going to make a website for my business, right? Or I'm going to start a business and I'm going to make the website, right? That's such that, like, that's what's running a huge portion of the growth in WordPress. And so a lot of people, like, they're, this is the one that they fit their needs, somebody told them for. And then, yeah, we have plenty of people who are saying, hey, I was using Gravity Forms or I was using, you know, whatever forms, formidable forms. Uh, and I tried this because somebody said something and it was great. Um, those are actually trickier for us because I've used Gravity Forms like three times 
And uh, with no disrespect, like I just never really needed a f- because of what I was doing. I was always doing pods development, and then like I don't know, counter airforms was my thing. And so people say like, oh, in gravity forms you can do this. How do you do that in counter airforms? Like, I have no idea. I've like edited somebody else's forms a few times. Seems nice. I don't really know much about it. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big gravity forms user. I've been using it for years and years. Pretty much since I realized that contact form seven didn't have database entries. So I was just like, okay, yeah. I got to move. That was pretty on. much what switched me as well. Yeah. So <laughs> you didn't I, have a backup. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. If you if your email's down, you don't get a a contact form. That's a problem. So. Oh, that's <laughs> Uh, I, I, honestly, I've never. I've tried it once. Uh, Amad Oas made this cool contact form seven uh, into the customizer add-on, uh, and I was like, oh, I want to check that out. But like, I, I, I did. Like, I've never used custom for con- contact. Yeah. Form just, seven. So yeah. I was like, I don't know how to use this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've I've used Gravity Forms a lot. I've I've looked into Ninja Forms. Uh, that seems great too. Yeah, it is good. I'm curious. You say that uh, Caldera Forms is a different kind of WordPress form builder. What, what do you mean by that? Um, I mean it's the you know the drag and drop interface in terms of being responsive. I don't know if you've tried it, but it's it's a grid. Like you're making a grid. Uh, so you you know like add a row, split it, divide it, drag it around, and so then it's just responsive from day one. Um, the way that the processors work is is differently, right? And the, the whole thing being like the conditional system is drag and drop. It's all very visual. Um, everything's like the database entries is by default. The AJAX uh, processing is by default. The emails is by, by default. Um, everything that you would need to get started is free, right? So you, when you need a payment processor like Mailchimp, right, those are add-ons. But mm-hmm. um, it's just it's it, it's a different way of using the admin to build visually your form, and uh, the fact that it's responsive using Bootstrap from just out of the box. Cool. So I'm, if if you're not, what if your theme is not using Bootstrap, so then you kind of got Bootstrap and whatever else might be loaded? Right. So, I mean, you can dis- like you can override it. Like, we have a example on how to use Foundation for your uh, responsive. Um, it's, an, it's a name-prefixed version of... Uh, of Bootstrap, right? Mm-hmm. So we took a um, Bootstrap download and prefixed it and pulled out all the stuff we didn't need. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty lightweight. Cool. So why don't you give us a little bit about Ingot? I know okay. you, it, that's pretty new. Yes, um, Ingot I'm, is very new. I'm definitely curious to hear about um, the path to it. Was it something that was more of like a, a customer need or was it something internal need? Um, it was a combination of internal need and fascination, uh, and then seeing that this wasn't a thing that existed and becoming. Like, I, I'm really excited by this. And so, uh, I, the, probably the earliest prototype of it was a few lines of code in the functions.php on calderawp.com, where I was running really unscientific price tests. You know, where I would just, like, write some filters into EDD's pricing, and then for a week, and then turn them off and then compare, right? That was my super uh, super scientific A-B testing method. Um, but, like, yeah, there isn't a great way of doing A-B testing in WordPress. Right. Um, the third, that with that, this number third-party service works really well with, um, uh, with e-commerce plugins and uh, is all integrated into the dashboard. Anybody can do it. And so that was our goal, was to put it all in the dashboard, make it super easy to use, um, it's literally like choose what type of test you want to run. You know, do you want to have like a button that where we change the text? Do you want to just have a straight up link with you change the text? Do you want to have a button where the text is the same but the color changes, right? So really right now we're focusing on call to actions. Um, we're about to add a new feature um, that will uh, change text and then it'll register a conversion when you get somewhere. So a specific page or you add a product to the cart with EDD or WooCommerce. Um, or you buy something, right? So that's a conversion. So it's like, I mean, we're using it right now, testing it on ingothq.com, where the top headline changes. There's four different options. So we're going to, and then when you add it to the cart, that's a conversion. So we're doing that kind of thing just to, you know, A-B testing is so big. And for, you know, a business like Ingot, we've been going to, like, WordCamps and asking people, like, how do we describe this? 
right? Do we call it an A-B testing te framework? Do we call it a self-evolving website? That's what I wanted to call it, right? Everybody, when I said that, looked at me like I was crazy, so we stopped doing it. <laughs> uh, I wanted to call it self-optimizing. Matt Cromwell told me that made it sound like a caching plugin, you know. Um, but we're, we're right now, we're trying to scale the business out. We're trying to start, we're starting to think about how are we going to do, like, pay-per-click ads, and I'm going to have, you know, A-B testing there, and I'm going to have it in, you know, I want that to integrate with WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. I want it to match up if they were, you know, if I'm testing three different creatives with different colors, I want that to, whichever color they picked, I want that to be, you know, reflected in my, uh, in, on the site when they get there. I want the message that, you know, if we're trying three different ways of describing something, I want to describe it the same way when they click through on a pay-per-click. Hmm. Right, so that's sort of my next project. Hmm. In this is the WordPress as the center is what's really interesting to me. Uh, I feel like WordPress started as very self-contained, and that was like, hey, you own your own data, you control everything. And then we all went, SaaS is great. And so we integrated with all these third-party SaaS services, which sometimes makes sense, sometimes doesn't. Um, but WordPress should be at the center, because we don't work for Facebook. We work for the site that we built for WordPress, on our WordPress site. And so when we use, use social media to draw people in, use ads to draw people in, um, but WordPress stays the center. We control our data, and we have more ability to affect the rest of the world with that. Um, and that's really what's exciting to me about Ingot. I mean, it's a neat challenge, right, playing with an A-B testing algorithm and uh, making it work so... Right, if you look at Optimizely, you can run that for two weeks, and they'd be like, yeah, to really know what to do, we're going to need 100,000 more views. <laughs> this is a lot of the feedback that I've gotten on Optimizely, and I see, based on the way their algorithms works, that makes sense. You know? And I went down that path for about a week trying to recreate that type of algorithm before I went out and realized, like, this is silly. There are better ways of doing this. Cool. Um, How long did it take you to develop? Uh, From idea to, say, like, MVP, the first time where you're like, cool, let's, let's launch this. A few months. Yeah. Um, I definitely... It's hard. It's fun, funny because in the last, like, week before we launched it, I threw out about a third of it. <laughs> And so that seems like a big waste, but, like, I don't think I could have written it as well if I hadn't have written it wrong the first time. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I, like, I screwed up the data structure. I screwed up the way in which we were going to do the calculation. I spent, like, this week on a bad... Right, because, like, the beta used a really dumb algorithm. It was, like, just run it ten times and then start the next one, right? Because it was, like, yeah. just make the rest of it work, and then we'll write a good... Yeah. We'll the other one. <laughs> but then when I went to, like, write the actual algorithm, I, like, spent a week on something silly that didn't make any sense. And it's one of those things where, as a developer, you have to, like, trust yourself that... Um, you wouldn't have done a good enough job. Mm. I mean, you couldn't have done it right if you didn't spend a bunch of time doing it wrong, and that's frustrating, but that's what it takes. Yeah. For the display, is it being smart about what version of a test it's displaying over time, like as it gains data and a level of confidence? Yeah, so over time, it starts out totally random, and it does that uh, if it's been run, it'll, it'll do that based on your average sessions, right? Uh, figure out this period of just random, totally completely random. And then once it's gotten past that point, uh, then it's going to start getting smarter about it, where most of the time it's going to choose the highest conversion rate. Um, and every every 30, 33% of the time, then it chooses random, just to mix the data, right? Because if you didn't go random, mm -hmm. it would never go, it would never try certain things. Mm -hmm. So it starts out totally random, so it can get a good basis. Um, and that's, uh, you know, it's, it runs at the amount of times that you have traffic you get average in a week, um, or a thousand, whichever one's greater, or whichever one's lower. And so, um, <laughs> at least a thousand, if not your average. Um, and then you, uh, and then after that, it chooses the best one. So that way, it's going to get automatically to you. You don't need to, like, go back and figure it out. You don't need to look at, like, we have a little graph there, which is good because you can do a little bit of human correction on this. But you don't need to go back and do the analysis. You don't need to look at it and figure out what you should have chosen mm -hmm. because over time it's going to be able to figure out, okay, well, this is totally abysmal and anormal, right? This is way too many standard deviations from the mean. Forget it. Um, but it's going to be trending towards the better ones once it gets past random. Uh, awesome. But it's still going to put in a little bit of randomness just in case. Do you think multivariate tests are something that you'll add support for in the future? Oh, it is multivariate. Okay. One of the things that we've tested so far is that nobody knows what multivariate is unless you're a <laughs> web developer. So we call it an A-B testing framework. It's, 
it's multivariate by design. I mean, you can put in two variants and now you're doing A-B testing, but it is multivariate by design. Uh, now, is it is it just within the actual content, or is it can you do it such that you could set up a, a test, so to speak, that has, let's say, multiple di templates, you know? So, like, you have a, like, for example, landing pages, right? So you want to test out certain landing pages. You set up the same copy on the landing page, but the templates are different. Can you do that? So right now that's not a feature, but it's something that we've definitely thought a lot about. Um, and the framework itself is very is very abstract, right, the underlying, right? So there's just one function to register an iteration and one function to register a conversion. So as a developer, you could make that pretty easily, right? Just mm -hmm. run a filter on whatever, to switch out templates. Um, that's something like, we'd like to get it to the point where it's like every stage of the sales funnel is a test, right, where we sort of sure. do the first step, do the second step, that's something that we're going to. But one of the things that was very important to me is that I knew that I was going to have people saying like, hey, what about this? And oftentimes I would be, like people ask me questions, I'm like, yeah, I would never make that a, fil a feature, <laughs> but you could do it and here's how. And I think that's important with yeah. uh, with WordPress plugins and, you know, that's sufficiently abstract. And I know you guys wanted to talk about the REST API, and I think that's one of the things that is exciting about the REST API is, right, you know, there's a PHP function that you can call in Ingot and get register conversion. You pass it the ID of the variant and it registers a conversion. But there's also an API endpoint there, yeah. right? And yeah. which is wrapped around the same function. But it's really neat that I can say to somebody, okay, just pass these parameters to the endpoint. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah. because saying to somebody, you know, hey, here's this PHP function, or use this hook, right? I mean, that's a level of specialization that might not seem like much to us, right? Like, we have jobs mm -hmm. because we know that. With the, with the, like, that's not a thing. But uh, that's not a common thing to say to somebody, I'll oh, use this hook. You know, use, uh, you know, figure figure out where do you put this PHP function, right? I do support for, for WordPress plugins, and I say, you can use this hook, you can use this function. Like, hey, which file of the plugin do I modify? No! Right? Nobody knows that, right? Yeah. Like, that seems insane to me. But it's not... And so I love the idea of I'm making a plugin that the REST API that it serves isn't something that's bolted on later. It's not an addition, right? I wrote the... I wrote the CRUD specifically abstract because I knew I was going to be wrapping REST API endpoints about it. Yeah. Because I knew that my admin, right, the admin for this is an Angular app. Oh, yeah, cool. Totally re uh, custom API endpoints is the only way it interacts with WordPress. Um, and the, you know, the thing that's hooked to add menu page is a few lines of HTML. Like, that's the callback. That's it. <laughs> um, and... It's wonderful. Uh, this is the subject of my talk in a, uh, work at Miami, by the way. It is, uh, right, they're doing this deeply learning JavaScript day, which ironically has very little to do with learning JavaScript deeply. It has to do with <laughs> learning frameworks so you don't have to learn JavaScript deeply. Um, <laughs> which I think is a problem. I think that everybody's question of like, oh, I should learn JavaScript deeply. Which framework is like... Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah, based on that, it sounds like Angular, Angular is your <laughs> preferred framework, yeah? Yeah. Do you know why? Because I understand no. <laughs> JavaScript and HTML5. I don't want to learn Facebook's version of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah, so. And how do you use the REST API in Caldera Forms, too? Same, oh, we similar don't. thing? No, oh, okay. not yet. I think that um, it will... Uh, Caldera Forms is still processing <laughs> against a custom, you know, endpoint, like you mm -hmm. would traditionally. Um, I mean, we're not using, like, admin Ajax or anything barbaric like that. Mm -hmm. Um... But, you know, it was, it's funny, in the next uh, the version that we're almost done with, um, we, we were trying to figure out what was the best way to have the API endpoint work no matter what the permalinks were, and we just went and ripped off uh, how the function REST URL works in the REST API, <laughs> right? Because it's really neat. Like, we were like, yeah. hold on, their, their thing is bulletproof, and it must work. And we just went there, and we are like, ah, oh, that's pretty smart. Um, like that, it, it, it the way that could, the way that they figured out when they should use uh, query string 
mm. instead of slash WP Jason is really smart. Um, yeah. Okay, in the function, uh, well, rest URL calls get rest URL. Yeah. I think I don't know. Look inside a rest URL and or whatever that calls uh, the multi-site version, um, and then look in there. It's kind of neat. It's like five or six lines. Um, so I would s assume that Caldera forms sooner than later uh, will uh, be based around the REST API. Um, the great thing about Ingot is it's brand new, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, the e e Epoch, the live commenting plugin I built for Postmatic, um, we started that um, you know eight months ago, and it, I made a argument for it should require the REST API, and it just didn't make sense at the time. Mm. And so I wrote a custom API for it, for all the Ajax there. The great thing about running Ingot was I was like, eh, we'll just require WordPress 4.4. We don't have any current users to Ingot, right? That's we what I want to ask you about. Because mm -hmm. with launching this new plugin that's making such heavy use of the REST API, are you gonna are you requiring 4.4 or are you shipping your own version bundled of the API in there for back and bet? No, I mean, it just requires WordPress 4.4. It would, um, some clients that I've worked with, this has been a concern, and so it's had to be bundled, which is bad, but, like, I get it. You can't. You know, this concerns me in Caldera Farms, right? How, what happens if we start using the REST API as a requirement for it? Um, the good thing about Ingot is it doesn't, it's all custom routes, so it doesn't require the plugin. It's just 4.4. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, for a new most likely when somebody's picking up a plugin, like a big plugin to add to their setup, it's because they're doing a new site or they're doing a site rebuild. So it's not a concern to me with Ingot because we don't have any like we don't have the like legacy users. It's a concern to me with Galera Forms because people have reasons not to upgrade their sites. Right? They're reliant on something or they're afraid of something. Right? They have like a real reason or a fear. So, so what? What? A step back, I guess. What got you really interested in the WordPress API? Like, I mean, you literally wrote the book on it, um, and you know, like, like what? What made you say, you know what? This is what I'm going to attach myself to, and I'm going to go in it. Uh, Ryan and Rachel and Nathan. Uh, is the short answer. Um, so, uh, WordCamp Milwaukee 2014 um, accepted me to speak, which was unique at the time. Um, like, it's a really wonderful thing that they did. Like, nobody had ever asked me to speak at a WordCamp. The other really lucky thing they did is they scheduled me against Chris Coyer so nobody was in the room when I bombed. Uh, like, I've gotten much better at WordCamp uh, talks. Uh, but I went to hang out with some people before the uh, event, before, like, the speaker's dinner. And I met Ryan and Rachel, um, and they told us a little bit about it. I was like, oh, this is so neat. Uh, and I went to their, like, introductory talk uh, that was really, really cool. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be great. Um, and then Nason's talk. Um, he said that the two most important things are the REST API and then the Fields API uh, that Scott's been working on. And I know, Tom, you've uh, been helping him out with that a bit. Um, and Fields API, by the way, the fact that this has, isn't a priority yet to the extent where we don't like go back in time and do it in five years ago um, is a little, like, Fields API should be a massive priority because it would be wonderful if we could just assume that a plugin has reg has support for the fields API, and I can say, let's say I was making a new UI system built around a REST API. Let's call it not Calypso. Let's call it Calypso. And so, I wanted to install that on my WordPress blog. That would be really neat. Until I was like, oh, what about the meta box for this plugin? Hmm. Right? But there's no standard for meta boxes. But wouldn't it be neat if I could write for this fictional thing called Calypso? I could write a, I could write an abstract, you know. Uh, React module that to connect to the WordPress Fields API. So for nobody traveled back in time and built that into WordPress five years ago. Problem. So anyway, uh, that was a diversion, but it, it's a problem. <laughs> uh, so Nason pointed the point, and he explained why the REST API was going to be big and why this was exciting. And I had been working with pods for a while. When I came on with pods, the sort of situation was, looks neat, I don't know how to use it. And the reason nobody knew how to use it is that the documentation was basically non-existent and it was all out of date, right? It was all pods 1.0, and the syntax was that they were use, that all that code was using was deprecated. So I just when I when I first looked at the REST API, I went, "This is awesome!" I just got in done with the whole like educating people about pods. So it was just kind of natural to me. 
Uh, and yeah, and I want to also saw it as like, oh, I could be that guy. Like now he's like, ah, oh, Josh, he's the REST API guy. I'm like, okay, cool, that worked. <laughs> um, like it was intentional. Um, I saw it as an opportunity to do something good for the community that would help get my name out there really well. Like cool. those are great win-win situations. So when you were starting to do that, was your real jump into the deep end by writing articles on Torque, and did that kind of lead into writing the book? Yeah. So the um, just writing. I mean, I I thought I didn't realize this was going to be a big like I wanted to write a lot about it, but I wasn't exactly sure how much further it was going to go than the first two. Like I read a two-part introduction to the REST API, right? That was sort of my first thing, uh, and I didn't think it was going to go that much further. Uh, but they got really, really good traffic, and nobody else had been writing about it, right? There was like, I don't know, look at that WordCamp presentation Ryan gave. Was your op, uh, was your alternative? Uh, and for me, it was really fun to like in this whole thing. Like, uh, I've just like been diving into source code and figuring out how it works. Um, like, honestly, that's what I need to write about next: is how to dive into source code and figure out how it works, because it's an important skill, and people don't do it enough. And it's silly, right? This is we think about the GPL in terms of redistribution which is our right. But the most important right there is the ability to understand the code that you're using. Mm -hmm. And that's for true. us as developers, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And so I've just been diving into source and figuring it out. Um, and then the book came about because uh, Marie, who's the editor at Torque, um, was said, hey, Josh, can we compile this into a book? And I said, yes, but a lot of it's out of date. Um, mm -hmm. And we're missing this, this, and this. And she said, okay, well, what if we paid you to um, update the stuff, you know, update the old articles, uh, and write the places you think are missing, and then we'll edit it up into a book, and write out, and give it away for free. That's amazing. Like, yeah. good people at Torque, which is WP Engine, uh, this blog, um, they're awesome. Like, they're not just really nice people, but they do good stuff for the community like this. Um, and, uh, like, they're awesome. And... This was just, they came at me like, hey, do you want to do this? And I said, that sounds wonderful. Uh, I've always wanted to do something like that. Uh, but if I had done that, I would have had to like hire an editor and hire a layout person. Mm -hmm. Instead, they did that, and they like compensated me for my time. Like, That's awesome. That's wonderful. <laughs> and so, from there, you've, you've diversed into a bit of a WordPress API course as such. So tell us a little bit more about that. That is almost done. Um, cool. I spent a lot of time... Uh, yesterday recording uh, WordPress plus Angular front-end stuff, mm -hmm. which is, so I'm not, like, like I'm the last person you would ever want to hire to build a website. And, <laughs> but, like, said working, here first. <laughs> no, 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 I, I don't do that. Like, that's not a thing I do. Like, I make, my clients are all people who are making plugins or websites and need, like, very specific mm -hmm. functionality, right? Yeah. Like, some sort of custom... You know, like, hey, I need to make WooCommerce do this, or I need to make, you know, uh, pods do, well, you know, mainly pod stuff, or, like, I have this weird challenge, and so I'll make, build them a plugin. And it, contractually, I will say, I will not make this look nice. I will sprinkle it with CSS selectors that somebody else can make it look nice. I'll put the data out in the correct order. Um, but working with Angular makes me kind of want to make websites. Cool. It's... Like I'm doing in my co in my REST API course, about a quarter of it's in Angular, yep. and you know I'm just doing like here's how you would have a list, and then here's a post and from two different sites, which is really neat, right? Because you just mm. like that's a great way potentially to solve scaling problems, right? One of the problems with scaling in WordPress is that PHP can only do one thing at a time, right? Yeah. Like PHP does a thing and then does another thing and another thing, but you can have two different sites that you're pulling into the same front end. One custom post type on one, one on the other. Now it can do two things. Um, so Angular and the UI router in Angular, right? Angular traditionally had an NG router, and now there's the UI router. UI router is the most beautiful thing in the world. It has multiple oh, cool. states. Like You can have multiple views in the same document across different, but it's one state. So you could potentially have like a header of a main content sidebar and footer state. And so it would only change if it needed to. Yeah, really wow. Cool. I don't even use the NG router, and they're like, uh, it seems okay, but that sounds really, really cool. The UI router is vastly superior. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so the course is um, was something that I always kind of wanted to do, but I wasn't sure about, and then I did a, uh, a webinar for um, for WP Engine that like a insane amount of people signed up for, and I was like, I, I gotta make a course. 
Um, and it's almost done. People are like bugging me. I said by the end of January, it's almost done. Uh, I'm a little busy. <laughs> but I, I, I should be there by the end of January. Uh, it's almost done. We recorded, and it's going to start with like what's a REST API and what does that mean in WordPress. Um, and like how to use the WordPress HTTP API to make requests and, and you know get and post requests. How to use jQuery AJAX, authentication basics, um, custom routes, extending the defaults, and then plugging this all into Angular. So it's like more of a, a like a I guess a beginner type course to get yeah. used to it. Yeah. It's a beginner course. I mean, it assumes that you could make the HTTP API and WordPress work, and that you can. Oh. You know, you understand jQuery Ajax. And the beautiful thing about Angular is that if you understand jQuery, like, Angular should be easy, right? It's a simpler Mm -hmm. implementation of Ajax. And it's, um, you know, it's a little, if you're not, if you've never used uh, an MVC framework before, it can be a little tricky in terms of getting your head around that, I guess. But it's pretty neat. And as I said, it's, I made a sarcastic comment at the expense of React. I'm getting ready for WordCamp Miami. WordCamp Miami is going to be, as far as I can tell, just a line in the sand between the React people and the, and the, face, and the <laughs> Angular people, right? But I'm convinced that Angular, or I'm sorry, I'm convinced that React was written to reprogram developers' minds into being Facebook developers. <laughs> like, there's a great article on Medium on don't use CS, that weird JavaScript CSS uh, framework they developed. That was like, this was built to solve Facebook's problem. Don't use it. It's insane. It's like a J- JavaScript library for writing CSS. And I'm convinced that's, like, I've never used React, so I could be speaking totally out of ignorance and wrong here. But the beautiful thing about Angular is that you write HTML. There's nothing syntactically wrong with an Angular view. Right? You write the, your template, and you're writing HTML, and you're using an HTML5 uh, data attribute. And it's very clean. There's no logic there. And it just works. It makes sense. Anybody who has a basic understanding of web development should be able to look at Angular and say, okay, that basically makes sense. <laughs> right? You, use, you, you, you write a class the same way that you've always written a class, right? Yeah. It, it, in React, if you want to add a class, you have to, like, camel case it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can't write class. There's some other decoration for it. And that's, that's not, not really in an HTML break, file though. that's in the callback of a JavaScript function. I'm like, <laughs> uh, have either of you guys written in React? I've messed around with it. Okay, I have. Yeah, it's different. Like, I understand why they do what they do. There's also a school of thought that React is going to be the new way that people learn because essentially there's no abstraction between your HTML, JavaScript, and JS. It's all in one thing. So if you're learning, you sit down, you learn basically there's three languages in one. So it's probably going to be a difficult barrier to entry for pe- new people, but I can understand the kind of logic behind it. It is yeah. fast, too. Is this uh, separation as a concerns is an, is an a great principle? Mm. of software design that I don't <laughs> go back on. And, I mean, we're WordPress developers, so <laughs> one of the things that's great about the REST API, I think, as a plugin developer, is it's forcing separations of concern or products mm. in a way that, uh, like, the reading, the go and read the REST API. The, it's really, really well written in yeah. the way that, like, custom routes work. All routes, but, like, you're, I mean, mm. you're looking at the at the defaults or you're writing your own, like, here's where you deal with sanitization. Here's where you declare the data types. Here's where you th- deal with validation. Here's where you deal with permissions. It's not, right, we've all written these, like, massive st- conditionals. Like, if is set, this is set and this is, like, uh, greater than zero, absent, and this is this, and this is val- valid, and, like, this is in this array, and, like, for seven hours of... <laughs> which you have to, right, in certain situations. And then you're, like, directly shoving, uh, right, at that point, then you're, like, sort of sanitizing or directly shoving things into get post meta, and that's all perfect, and then somebody else comes along and just shoves the wrong type of thing into that meta key, because you never registered it, right? Who registers post meta? Unrelated, but since you've done a lot of diving into the source code and whatnot, I have a specific question for you with the API. Okay, line 723. Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> so, say I have a service that, and it consumes JSON B. Is there a way for me to go and make the endpoint in WordPress deliver JSON P and have like a callback? 
Yes, I believe there's a specific filter for it. I don't know what it is. 723, it's right? <laughs> yeah, it's in there. It's probably in uh, server WP REST. I mean, there's only like four classes in the whole thing, five classes mm -hmm. in the whole thing. Ignore the defaults. There's WP uh, REST server, WP REST um, res res request, WP REST response, which extends WP or H WP HTTP response, and then um, yeah, so it's like four classes. It's in there. It's in one of those. Cool. <laughs> WP includes slash REST API, dude. It's somewhere in there. Yeah, it's built in. Um, I've never used JSONP. I like lightly understand the point of it. Um, I, I don't really. I just know that my the thing I'm integrating with needs to consume <laughs> JSONP. Yeah. So look at it. It's in there. All right. Uh, I know that it's in there. Uh, Daniel Boucher is probably the best person to ask that of. Will do. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> well, now that uh, you know, do we all get a piece of that pie now? That, that <laughs> invoice. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So how excited were you when the infrastructure finally got into core, Josh? Um, I mean, it was a, it's a weird thing, right? Like that this was something that and this is what's beautiful about um the REST API is that, like this isn't a thing that automatic needed. Like WordPress.com has no need for this, right? They already had their own API. Um that worked well for them, right? Hmm. It still does. Um and it's really neat that um you know, companies like Human Made and, uh, you know, Rachel was working at 10Up at the time that this started. I know she's at what? Uh, at, um, that cool, that, oh, that's such a neat site. Ah, I like that. It's Wire cutter. Wire, wire cutter. cutter. That's a great site. Yeah. Um, uh, that was, like, you know, that's one of the benefits of being a uh, developer. So every now and then you're like, oh, my God, I know the first who made that, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, it's neat that companies like that it, who just had a need for this. Right, mm. just built it. It needs a real validation of the uh, our community that it happened that way. Um, so I was pretty excited to see it. I mean, it felt unavoidable. Um, mm. It was weird that like nobody on the core team besides like Jake with was ever like really talking about it. Yeah. In support, um, but it wasn't like it was neat that it just kind of happened organically. Um, yeah. And uh, but then it was like, hold on, are we doing this? Uh, but yeah, it was exciting. Um, and I like the fact that they've taken the extra time to get the defaults right. Um, there's mm -hmm. been a lot of movement and a lot of like backwards compatible breaking changes yep. over the last few months on the defaults that are like annoying, but mm -hmm. wonderful because once it's in core, then it's going to be hard to fix. And yep. so um, that uh, campaign, that crowdfunding campaign uh, for WP Clear Rest. Um, as free Danny ought to do a lot of extra work on the on the REST API period, um, and there's been a lot of see, like, I see all those PRs coming in. Um, there's a lot of good stuff happening there, a lot of like, smart stuff to do it right. So it's taken way longer than anybody expected. Mm. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with the decision that they went. Well, we can't throw it all in at once, so let's just go with infrastructure first. I was like, ah, don't really get it. I'm like, no, this is actually really cool. And obviously, yeah, we know the new um, Omenbeds feature is all powered by that, so it's the only endpoint that's registered in core at the moment, and we all can add our own, and it's yeah. pretty pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was, uh, Ryan was saying that was probably what was going to happen for a long time. I mean, Ryan's mm. just one of those smart people who, like, mm -hmm. sees things ahead of all the rest of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> like, like the, the 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 ticket that led to terms meta term splitting that eventually allowed term meta to happen that he opened when he was like in twelve or eleven I think yeah <laughs> like we all did the math because <laughs> when I met him I was like I was the, it was like a year or two before that got closed or it was like a year before that got closed I met him and we were he was complaining about the fact that when he came to the states he couldn't buy he couldn't get served in a bar yeah. <laughs> it was like I'm, I'm over eighteen I should be allowed alcohol and I was like oh you're twenty years old dude deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw that and I started doing the math I was like oh dude yeah it's pretty crazy I'm lucky to have work with him in the office every day so if I get stuck uh, I've got a good guy to go to <laughs> he's he, he's fabulous I was reading the um, the article on the um, the, the Gaussian blur oh yeah Analyzer. I was like okay, that's smart stuff it's awesome yeah really cool um, so what do you think will change once the endpoints get into core? I mean, I'm not a front-end developer, right? So for me, I've already got everything I need, right? 
<laughs> just to be honest, like I'm a plugin developer, and so for me, I can build a plugin around the REST API, right? I can have a custom a API, and I, and I can have, like, I can't tell you how much, how wonderful it is. Like, we, when we realized we needed to do stats in the admin for Ingot, uh, Roy uh, Sivan, who's helping us out a lot on UI stuff, said, I need, like, what do you need? And I told him, and he was like, that's great, Josh, but, like, none of these endpoints exist. Like, now that this data is available, and I was like, give me a half hour. And I just added a couple custom made yeah. endpoints. Boom. There. So as a plugin developer, I'm kind of, I'm happy. Um, I think that, you know, enterprise-level developers, you know, people who do, have been using this forever, right? I mean, this has sort of been the way that people build websites with, and fallbacks for non-JS and pre-rendering for bots and these sorts of things. So I think that if I, when I discover the other 50 hours in the day, um, I'm going to develop... Don't wait for this. <laughs> like uh, Genesis, like the Genesis equivalent of the REST API front end, right? I don't think that reverse engineering themes using the REST API is possibly the best idea. Mm -hmm. I think that the expectation of what a WordPress theme is is so set yep. that it's going to be tricky to do that, and I think that this is an opportunity to say the WordPress theme is really a good idea for when it was created. And I think this is an awesome opportunity to have a different presentation layer in WordPress. And I use Genesis as a example because um, a like I think like the marketing for Genesis is like WordPress but better. And Genesis is not the only way to do a really good WordPress front end, but like they do deliver like Genesis is good stuff, right? And they but beyond that they um, have created this very easy to get into stand, set of standards, if that makes sense, right? Yep. That, like, you switch between different Genesis child themes, but you always use this hook for modifying the main loop, right? Whatever that is. And, like, if you want to put something in the sidebar, like, it's always this hook, right? And, you know, the CSS is all sort of logical built into that, right? And as somebody who doesn't know very much about themes, I can, or Genesis, right, basically not at all, I can jump into Genesis real quick and do something, right? Because it's a very standard thing, and it's all pretty standardly laid out. And so I think that um, uh, that type of approach to a new thing instead of a theme, somebody should do. Um, I would love to do it. Um, again, it's a 24-hour in the day problem um, that I've come to accept begrudgingly. Um, right, and so I don't know if that's using something that's very simple like uh, web components. Um, hmm. Or that's coming up with like a standard set of uh, Angular uh, bindings. And then, like, because potentially something like Angular, you could hand anybody a cheat sheet on bindings hmm. and, right, explain to them how an NG repeater works, right? Like, anybody should be able to pick that up pretty quick hmm. and just have an invisible set of controllers that a more advanced developer can modify, yeah. right? But if you handed it to them and you gave them the basic directives that they would need to use, like a show, hide, and, um, you know, maybe like a featured image directive, um, just do it. And I think that that, and this is, again, where you get into that, like, Genesis um, analogy of you give people a, a standard set that they can learn that pattern very quickly. And people be, and this is one of the great empowering things about WordPress. I don't look down at, P, at my nose at people who know less PHP than me. You know? Um, it's great that something like Genesis exists and lets people make their own website or become a professional yeah. implementer. Um, and so I think that's the kind of opportunity that's going to open up. I don't exactly know how to do that right. Um, but I think once the front-end stuff gets to be ubiquitous, I think that... Um, and yeah, I think people will make like REST API-powered themes, but I worry about that. Yeah. I don't think it's a good fit. But I don't know. I could be wrong. It happens. Not to be like looping back too much, but uh, so when you announced your API course, I signed up like right away. Uh, and I almost kind of forgot about it until it was mentioned today. I was like, oh, yeah, I paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get so, it, Tom, don't worry. No, I'm looking forward to that. But uh, around the same time uh, that you had announced it, Tim Nash was, has also done a, a JSON API course. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, there's this course also. So I was wondering if you had a chance to take a look at Tim's and compare and contrast it all between them. Nope, I have not. Uh, Roy C. Vaughn also has one that's specifically aimed at Angular. Um, that you should also check out. Buy them all. Um, I think if you're, if you're the kind of person who learns from videos, like, 
it's an amazing value. Uh, like, like my course is like seventy five bucks. Like, and I, I forget what Tim's charging. It's something similar. I don't know. Like, Roy's is part of Linda. Like, don't be cheap. Just buy them all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm serious. Like, I often yeah. I hear from people who ask me about writing, and they're like, "Oh, I don't know what to write about. Everybody's written about everything." <laughs> and I'm like, first off, that's not true. But second off, even if somebody's already written about what you've written about, like there was a time where I would be like mad that somebody wrote a blog post about something. Like, how did you actually WordPress? I was like, I did that three weeks ago, right? That was wrong. <laughs> because everybody learns differently. And this is really important to me because I, like when I was a kid, I had terrible learning disabilities, couldn't read and stuff like that. And um, it's really important to me that we have in this community a long, large range of ways of learning. Yep. Um, because everybody's different, and for us to be as uh, as uh, accepting and diverse as possible, we need to uh, find ways of bringing in people who learn differently. Mm. And so, do you want to know the honest reason why I haven't watched uh, Tim Nash's course? Is I don't learn by watching videos. Okay. I just don't. Like, I go to work camps to hang out, um, and like, I went to um, uh, like one talk at work camp in New York uh, that wasn't uh, my talk. Uh, it was in your yeah, your boss, Matt, and he did the rewrite thing, right? Oh, you didn't go to my talk? No, I didn't. Yeah, well, I didn't believe it. Jeez. <laughs> but I sat the entire time digging through his code. I like I put in a pull request on the plugin he was talking about. Yeah, he read Because I can't stuff. learn anything from listening to him. And it's not about him, it's about the way that I learned, right? Mm -hmm. Like I was like brief I was like sort of paying attention to him, but I was mainly just reading the code because that's how I learned. And so the one of the reasons why I write all this stuff and make videos is because I learn by explaining things. Mm -hmm. So it's really useful to me to make a web, to make a course, because it gives me an excuse to like yeah, explain my money. screen. Mm -hmm. But I like I would never watch it, and that because like that's not how I learn. Gotcha. You made a good point too, because it, like you said, everyone should buy it because it's not that expensive, and it's also a tax write-off. It's professional mm -hmm. development, right? So buy all the courses, and it's a tax write-off. So oh, that, yeah. that is the big plug for you right there. <laughs> well, yeah, you should. That's why you should have opened it up in December instead of January. I know. Well, I mean, I bought it back in December. Oh, it's on sale. I'm good. Uh, and you got it at seventy five dollars. I'm gonna raise it to a hundred once it comes out. So if you're watching this, you can go to joshfress.net slash rest hyphen API, I think. I don't know, there's a pop up. If, we'll put a link in. <laughs> yeah, we'll put a link. Uh, and you can buy my course at this discounted rate and you'll get it in like a week or two and then it'll be more expensive. So you can save money. But you should buy Tim's. You should uh, Roy did this thing on Linda. Um, watch them all because um, they're all gonna be different. I don't know how different because I. Yeah. On that note, where else can people find you online? Oh, I'm everywhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Tom's website and find me. Um, <laughs> so uh, joshpress.net is my website um, that I occasionally write stuff on. Uh, I try and write more. Um, and I um, my uh, Caldera WP. Uh, if you're interested in Caldera Forms, we have some other plugins, but uh, there as well, the Caldera Forms, uh, which you can check out for free on WordPress.org. So check out the WordPress, the WordPress plugins page. I've been on there like 20 times. Um, and then Ingot is the the simple um, uh, A/B testing plugin that we've been building, um, which is really neat. And that's Ingot I N G O T H Q dot com. Uh, so yeah, CalderaWP.com, Ingot HQ. I'm Josh412 on Twitter. If you want to bug me, follow me. Thanks, Josh. Where can we find you guys, Jason? Uh, I'm at Res. That's with three Zs. Just about everywhere. Cool. Bronson. Cool. I'm at Bronson Quick on Twitter. Right on. And um, at YouTube. I'm Tom Harrigan on Twitter. And uh, make sure to go to wpdevtable.com/slash/subscribe. Uh, like, share, subscribe. iTunes, RSS, YouTube, all that other fun stuff. Uh, and be sure to check out all the past episodes on YouTube. Right. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. Thanks very much, Josh. Right. Thanks a ton, Josh. Thank you for having me, guys. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>